Alberta. Before I begin, I just want to acknowledge that Edmonton is Treaty 6 territory, the traditional home to Alexander First Nation, Alexa Nagoda Sioux Nation, Enoch Cree Nation, Whitefish Lake First Nation, and Paul First Nation. This area also has deep meaning for the people of the Métis Nation of Alberta. I'd like to thank my colleagues, Minister of Jobs, Economy and Innovation, Doug Schweitzer, and Minister of Advanced Education, Demetrius Nicolaitis, for ensuring that women have access to the academic career and support that they need to help drive Alberta's economic recovery. We're also joined today here by Carolyn Campbell, President and CEO of Northwest College, Mishek Mwaba, President and CEO of Bow Valley College, and Tracy Patra Collins, Interim President, Yellowhead Tribal College. I'd also like to recognize Allison Anderson, Dean of Business Technology and Center for Entertainment Arts at Bow Valley College, Bettina Pierre Gilles, Gilles sorry, member of Bow Valley College's Board of Governors, Tasneem Rahim, Director of Fund Development and Alumni Engagement for Bow Valley College, Claudette Rain, Senior Administrative Officer for Yellowhead Tribal College, Jocelyn Vario, uh, Registrar and Department Head for Science and Technology, Yellowhead Tribal College, Brittany Pestion, uh, Communications, Yellowhead Tribal College. You know, International Women's Day gives us a chance to recognize the many ways women have contributed to our communities and our province. Although it's important to give women the recognition and appreciation they deserve, we also need to focus on helping more women pursue, pursue their passions and succeed in the workforce. I'm proud of what Alberta's, Reco Alberta's recovery plan has achieved so far. We've created grant programs such as the Women's Economic Recovery Challenge Grant, and we've invested in the Momentum Community Economic Development Society and Amazon Web Services Restart Program, just as a few examples. This is how we're helping to ha women to find new career opportunities and access training for in-demand, high-paying jobs. One of the most important ways Alberta's government invests in this province's future is by supporting women in, and gender-diverse students. And I'm proud to announce that as part of Alberta's recovery plan, we've been able to support a record number of women in STEM. Now I'm pleased now to hand over the microphone to Minister Schweitzer to share some more information on how Alberta's government is supporting women in pursuing post-secondary education. Thank you so much and uh, thank you everybody for making some time here today for this important announcement on International Women's Day. What we're announcing here today is a part of a broad strategy to help make sure that you know, women, entrepreneurs, people that want to get into the workforce have those opportunities available to them. Uh, today we're launching a million dollar bursary in partnership with Northwest College, Bow Valley College, and Yellowhead Tribal College to make sure that we have access to those STEM-based opportunities for women and people that need the extra opportunities to get into this workforce. There's so many career opportunities right now in the STEM fields. We have thousands of jobs in the technology and innovation space, for example. And as well in Alberta, we have a higher percentage of women founders as well, of companies and entrepreneurs right here in the province of Alberta. But this isn't the only part of this. This is just one piece of a broader strategy. Late last year, we launched our challenge grant program, and you should have seen the applications that have come in. We got about double or triple the number of applications that we thought that we were going to get. The quality of these applications was amazing. We're going to fund more of them than we had initially anticipated just because of the quality that was there. And you're also going to be seeing launch from our government in the next little while as well a micro loan program as well to help women entrepreneurs that historically have struggled to find that first loan from a financial institution help make that barrier a little lower to help get those founders off the ground and get their businesses to be become successful so again this is an important day and again we want to make sure that women that want to get into stem have those opportunities in alberta these bursaries this million dollars is going to help accomplish that goal so thank you to, so much to our department that helped put this together you should see the amazing people behind the scenes politicians get to come up to the mic but it's the people behind the scenes that make all of this really happen and it's a team strategy to get this done and we're really excited to have this part of a broader strategy 
to help women get into STEM. So thank you so much for all of our partners, and I'm going to turn it over to Minister Nicolaides for a few more words. Fantastic. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Doug said a, a few more words. He didn't give me a time limit, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the vast majority of that and, uh, uh, and provide my remarks here. Uh, but again, good morning, everyone. It's a real pleasure to, uh, to see so many of you again and to see so many of you in person. I know it's been a very challenging two years for, for many of us, and uh, uh, great to, to be here on campus with, with so many of you. It's a, it's a real pleasure uh, as well, given, of course, the importance of today is International Women's Day, uh, to announce these, uh, these new programs and new supports as part of uh, our Women's Economic Recovery Program. I do want to begin by just providing a shout out and recognition to my colleagues, Minister Schweitzer, of course, and uh, Associate Minister Isaac, as well as to thank uh, Carolyn Campbell for hosting us today here at Norquest, and as well for the incredible work that uh, the institution has undertaken over the last two years. I just want to take a quick moment to, to recognize the work that has happened here. Of course, over the past two years, our post-secondary institutions have had to endure some challenging times in navigating through the turbulent waters of the COVID-19 pandemic. That hasn't been easy. It's, uh, our institutions have had to shift online, in person, back to online, back to in person, and that's been a huge challenge. And I think uh, the, uh, the president, senior leadership, the board of governors, and all staff here at Norquest Community College deserve a significant round of applause and appreciation for their hard work in keeping students safe during this pandemic. So of course we know that students perform better and reach their full potential when we can reduce barriers and enhance the student experience and increase access. All of this leads to a strong economy and subsequently to better communities. With today's announcement, we are working to show that Alberta is indeed the best place to work, live, raise a family and study. Today is a great example of how different ministries within the government of Alberta work together to find innovative solutions to invest in a future that supports all Albertans. I'd like to thank my colleagues for their tremendous work on the Women's Economic Recovery Committee to identify policy gaps for women and to develop new recommendations and grant programs to support women's economic recovery post-COVID-19. Just a few weeks ago, we announced new supports to support skills development training for women's success in the IT sector. Just as IT STEM has a disproportionate amount of women in the field and Alberta's government wants to ensure women have opportunities and support to pursue these jobs in search of better labor market outcomes. It is clear that we must take meaningful action to reduce many of the barriers that women face when pursuing STEM oriented occupations. Last month, I had the fortune of announcing 1.9 million in new funding to a two year research and innovation grant to help more women find successful careers in the growing field of cloud computing. But there is more that we need to do. And that, of course, brings us to today's announcement of a million dollars to create new bursaries for women in science, technology, engineering and math. This new funding is another meaningful step forward in helping more women achieve success in emerging careers. There is no question that this new bursary will help women find success in emerging careers. And there are two key ways that it will help. Firstly, it will help connect women to in-demand occupations. The tech sector especially uh, in particular, has seen very strong signs of economic growth in, in Alberta in recent months, including historic investments in Calgary by Amazon Web Services just as recently as November. These investments not only mean great things for the future of our province, but they create a promising future for women in the workplace. Secondly, this new bursary will also help reduce many of the barriers, the real barriers that women face when trying to succeed in STEM fields. The bursaries will be available to reduce the financial and personal barriers many women face in pursuing post-secondary education. 
In addition to covering a portion of tuition and fees, it can also be used for things like supplies, laptops, transportation, and childcare costs. In closing, we will continue to make investments that ensure we are including women and all Albertans in our prosperous future. Thank you very much for having me here again today, and I'm happy to turn things over to President and CEO of Northwest College, Carolyn Campbell. Good morning and happy International Women's Day. Thank you, Minister Nicolades. The funding announced today by you and your colleagues once again demonstrates your commitment to making education accessible for Albertans. Here at Norquest, some 62% of our learners are women. They come to Alberta's colleges looking to earn an education that will lead to a brighter future for them and their families. So by committing $1 million in funding, the government of Alberta is supporting women, their families, and their communities. I can think of no better way to celebrate International Women's Day than this announcement that will help us eliminate barriers to women's participation in a workforce relevant science, technology, engineering, and math education. Norquest knows well that there are scores of women who have the interest, but not the means, to earn a STEM-related education. Funding learner access bursaries for women in STEM means supporting the skills women need to enter an outstanding STEM career. But it also amounts to a voice of confidence for women in STEM, a signal that they are welcome, that they are supported, and that they are a critical part of industries that rely on graduates of STEM fields. We all know that these fields have enormous potential for terrific careers that can help women and their families thrive. Now, as Alberta colleges continue to develop exceptional STEM programs, and with supporters like the Government of Alberta in their corner, women are better able to fully participate in Alberta's STEM industries. We have the learners ready, willing, and able to hit the ground running in the workforce of today and the workforce of tomorrow. We have the programs, workforce ready education, that will allow women to succeed. And now, thanks to this transformational investment in women in Alberta, Norquest can be more accessible and more impactful than ever and open more incredible opportunities than ever before for women in STEM. Now, I'd like to invite my colleague, Mishak Mawaba, President and CEO of Bow Valley College to the podium to share some remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Minister Schweizer, Minister Nicolaidas, Associate Minister Isaac, and distinguished representatives from Northwest College and Yellowhead Tribal College. I want to start first by acknowledging uh, my colleagues who are with me here today. Uh, Bettina, Bettina uh, Pires uh, Gilles, uh, who is uh, on the Board of Governors of Valley College, uh, Alison Anderson, Dean of Business Technology and Center for Entertainment Arts, uh, Taz Razin, uh, Director of Fund Development, and Michael Crow, Vice President Academic. Thank you very much for accompanying to this uh, important announcement here. Um, it is an honor to take part in this significant announcement on International Women's Day. It is a remarkable day for science, technology, engineering, and math disciplines, STEM-related studies, and for the exceptional women who will soon benefit from the bursaries. Contributions like these grants are critical for post-secondary education as our institutions continue to make strides 
in advancing gender equality and as Alberta recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic and other economic challenges. Boval College is thrilled to receive this STEM grant from the Ministry of Jobs, Economy and Innovation, which will support upward of 20 women through our Women Pivoting Intake Bursary Program. The bursaries for those 20 women will not only support the academic journey by covering tuition, but will also help offset costs such as technology, child care, and day-to-day -day financial pressures. Prioritizing an education can weigh heavy on one's mind when you have a family to support and look after and need to make rent or mortgage payments. A $20,000 bursary will give each recipient the confidence and the reassurance they need to embark on this life-changing venture without the financial barriers that prevent so many women from taking that leap. As an engineer myself, I know very well that women are underrepresented in the STEM programs. I witnessed the same discrepancies in my professional experiences as, as well as my time working in academia. Women are underrepresented in STEM. And let's not kid ourselves, it's not for lack of talent, but the several barriers that they face. And this grant, ministers, is really going to help remove those barriers. Bovale College's strategic priority is to open doors, open minds. The college is a caring and inclusive community and believes in doing all it can to provide our female students targeted reskilling and upskilling opportunities by opening those doors and opening minds. Our instructors, many of whom are women, are invested in seeing our students graduate with job-ready skills in digital, tech, and creative industries. Our Women Pivoting in Tech Bursary will help promote and advance gender equality for women looking for a mid-career change for newcomers and for our indigenous students. They will be able to pursue a diploma or post-diploma certificate in cybersecurity, in cloud computing, in information technology systems, or software development. All STEM professions actively looking for new talent to fill a growing number of well-paying jobs. Bovale College will also ensure our recipients have access to student supports, including coaching, mentorship, and indigenous student supports. We hope this is just the beginning of our contribution to a pipeline of talented women to our better digital economy. Bovale College would like to leverage this grant to raise donations from the community to award bursaries to even support more female students in STEM careers. Bovale College prides itself on being bold and resilient. The college is committed to making education affordable, attainable, and a reality for all our veterans. This partnership with the Ministry of Jobs, Economy, and Innovation and the Ministry of Advanced Education will help remove barriers women have historically faced in careers in STEM. It will encourage an equal playing field and develop strong role models and mentors for other women who will surely be emboldened by their success and see it as possible to open doors and open minds to a great rewarding career. Thank you so much. And at this time, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Tracy Potra Collins, Interim President of Yellowhead Tribal College. It's a shaky podium. <laughs> Tanse, Anin, Abawashtit. Well, good morning. Good morning, Associate Minister Isaac, Minister Schweitzer, Minister Nicolades, my colleagues, um, 
all the delegates here and everyone present. I'm very honored to be here this morning and to share some words of appreciation, um, inspiration, and uh, just honored to be here this morning. I always thank the Creator for a beautiful day. I thank the Creator that we live in peace. We know there's so much suffering going on in the world, and it's pretty tough. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of the Yellowhead Tribal College. It's a college that we're very proud of. We're very small, um, but we've produced a number of exceptional academics, women in the sciences, mathematics, um, to work with our communities, to rebuild our communities. So, I also want to acknowledge that we are on the Treaty 6 territory, you know, that had a name prior to becoming Treaty 6. It's a traditional gathering area of my ancestors and the ancestors of my colleagues. We gathered here for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, so I really wanted to, to make that acknowledgement. Uh, last year, Yellowhead Tribal uh, celebrated 35 years of operation. And we're looking forward to another 35 plus years of operation to meet the demands of our growing population. Um, as we know, our native population is growing at a much higher rate than the rest of uh, what we call Canada, what we call Turtle Island. We are blessed to be here, uh, living in peace. We have the common goals of innovations to address issues we face on a regular basis. With the guidance of the elders, our community leaders, we are able to address the most pressing needs. In our current global crisis, Knowledge in STEM is more important than ever. We need to rebuild communities. We need to create life-saving innovations. We need to repair our environment and ensure our waters are clean and protected as we go forward. Careers in STEM prepare our students to accomplish these tasks. The values instilled in our students Come from thousands of years of teachings and it has always been to honor mother earth to honor the land and the water we need to prepare our students for the ever-changing world whether it is from addressing the impacts of covid 19 and my condolences to those families who lost people due to this pandemic and that uh, virus we also need to build or rebuild a safe and healing world. And my deepest respects to those people in Ukraine and the suffering going on in Ukraine and Russia. And I say Russia because I believe there are people there who want peace too. You know, our elders always tell us to speak from the heart. And uh, I know this is an extremely formal setting and doing my best but sometimes the reality of the world that we live in, we need to share what's happening. And uh, I'm gonna get through this. <laughs> um, building communities is vital. Through STEM, we're able to meet the demands of the current labor market by becoming critical thinkers, increasing gender equality in the workforce, and benefiting from the careers produced from that. And I know there were, I've got many relatives who would love to be a participant in that. And through this bursary, we're going to be able to do that. So thank you so much. Building communities. As women, we know the value of family. We know the value of the environment. We know the value of water. We have gone from a world of maybe from two years ago, where it would be maybe I will do something to now it is, I must do something. So we must work together. We must repair our environment. We must build and repair our infrastructure. And we must be role models for future generations. We need our students to be able to solve real world problems. And this bursary is gonna really help us do that. So we're so honored to be a recipient of this bursary. So thank you very much. 
We will be using this funding to distribute bursaries within our college and provide the much needed support for the women that come from our communities. The Yellowhead Tribal College is governed by four First Nations, the Alexis Nakota Sioux, the Alexander First Nation, the Ochis First Nation, and the Sunchild First Nation. Bringing all of our nations together, we are probably looking at about 8,000 people. And of that, uh, we're probably looking at about 5,000 women. So this is really going to help us. So thank you so much in supporting us. Through our experience, we know that increasing women's participation in STEM programming strengthens our economy, strengthens our family, and brings healing to all of us. So thank you very much for listening. I know through STEM, we've got a lot of work to do, but more important, there's so much support now to make sure that this happens. So hi, hi, ish, nish, make witch. Thank you. That brings us to the end of our formal announcement and to the media question and answer portion. So what I'll do is I'll start on the floor here. Um, if you have a question, there's a microphone at the back. You can have one question and one follow-up. And we just ask that you identify the outlet you're with and who you're directing your question to. Um, all three ministers, Minister Schweitzer, Nicolaides, and Isaac, and all three presidents, uh, President Campbell, Mwaba, and Patra Collins, are all willing to take questions. Go ahead, please. Sure, Shailan Skolsky with CTV News. My question is for uh, Minister Schweitzer. Um, unrelated to today's announcement, uh, my follow-up will be, I promise, but Budget 2022 spoke of job creation. Does the price of oil create hiring opportunities yet? And if so, how many in what specific sectors? When you take a look at the current economic trajectory of Alberta, we're seeing job creation in pretty much every industry that you, that you that's here in Alberta. So everything right now from the tech and innovation space clean tech, our conventional oil and gas industry, agricultural, manufacturing, logistics. So when you take a look at where we were a year and a half ago to where Alberta is right now, every part of our economy is heading in the right direction. And there are thousands of positions right now that need to be filled. And this goes into, again, every single one of those sectors. So that's one of the reasons why we put the $600 million focus on skills and training and also attraction of talent to the province of Alberta. Uh, who would have thought a year and a half ago that one of the areas that could hold back growth and opportunities in Alberta is actually labor and making sure that we have enough skilled labor in the province of Alberta. So we're seeing in migration as well, people are moving here from British Columbia, Ontario. We started to see that, that reversal of that trend mid last year. We're expecting that trend to continue this year and next year and the year after as well. People continuing to come to Alberta like we've historically seen in previous decades. So again, we're working right now with industries on making sure we can help fill those labor gaps. We're also working as well with the energy industry right now in Alberta on how we can help fulfill global challenges. I mean, again, the world has changed, particularly in the last few weeks. Uh, our energy minister, Minister Savage, and our premier are down in Texas right now at a conference advocating for further development of pipeline resources, so pipeline access to get our products out there to market to make sure that we can stand firm when it comes to our NATO allies and making those commitments. Europe right now is looking at getting off of Russian oil and gas. How can Canada be a, a, a player in all that to help solve those challenges globally? That's what our Premier is doing right now in Texas as well as our Energy Minister. And just as a follow-up in relation to today's announcement, uh, I guess what in-demand occupations are you identifying in the STEM fields that companies are telling you, we need more workers, we want more women? What jobs specifically are you looking to fill? So right now in Alberta, in the technology and innovation space in particular, we're seeing thousands of positions that right now need to be filled across Alberta. And this isn't just Edmonton and Calgary, this is you know, cities like Grand Prairie, Lethbridge, Technology and innovation jobs in particular are in big, big demand, and it's a global race for talent. And we want to make sure that we provide our post-secondary institutions with the resources that they need, as well as making sure that students can access that training that they require to make sure that we can fill those positions and meet that demand. Perfect example of this is when you look at the venture capital investment in Alberta. We went from about $100 million in 2018, and it steadily has gone up over the last three years. So this last year, 2021, it was $561 million of venture capital investment in Alberta. It's accelerating the growth. We're seeing major international and national companies establish offices here in the province of Alberta. You have emphasis, emphasis 
RBC's Innovation Hub here in Edmonton. We also had HCL, again, major international players that want to be a part of our ecosystem and development opportunities for people for jobs as well. Any other questions on the floor here? Go ahead. Hello, I'm Kim Smith with Global News. This is for either minister. Do you know how many women will benefit from this bursary? And do you know when the money will begin being distributed to students or when they can start applying? Uh, you know, I'm going to defer to the actual colleges to give you the details on how they're going to administer the bursaries as well. So let them speak to the actual administrative detail on it. But what we're doing, this is going to be flowing before the end of March. So the money's going out to the colleges right now, right away, uh, to help fill that demand. And I think the colleges can actually speak to how they're going to structure those bursaries. We give them the resources they can put in place, the plans for how they're going to do that. Absolutely. Thank you for the question. We have a Women in STEM program. And, uh, and it's bursaries that are specifically set up to help individual women get through their entire STEM education. Uh, so each woman would get $20,000 and that would take her through her entire uh, diploma, which is really exciting. So with this, this gives us an opportunity to put countless women through uh, especially our Faculty of Business programs. We have several programs um, that are in the sciences tech um, environment, um, machine learning analyst, and so on. Lots of great programs. So this will, this will be a real boon for many, many women. Okay. And while I have you, if, um, if you could speak to the barriers that women currently face. You know, I mean, and that's part of what this, um, this bursary, this Thousand Women in STEM aims to do, is to reduce barriers like access to childcare, to your transportation, the practical things of getting in and out of school, um, the application to get in, seeing your way through the process, and then seeing yourself in a program and seeing yourself in college. So um, I hope that that helps. Okay, thank you. And maybe um, if the president of the Yellowhead College, if you could speak to the barriers as well, would, would that be okay? Thank you. At the Yellowhead Tribal College, um, we really look at supporting our students in any way that we can. The majority of our, our students um, have families. So the issues of childcare, transportation, are also huge barriers. Um, many of our students live in our rural communities because our nations are about 40 minute on a good day drive. So those are some of the barriers that we overcome. Um, some of the things that we look at in terms of the programming that we provide, we often prepare our students to move on to another mainstream institute. Um, so we're kind of giving them those the beginning skills in terms of where they're going to begin on their career path in STEM. Uh, our programming is looking a lot at environment, uh, looking at water, uh, looking at renewable sources of energy. Um, so these are the guidance that come from our elders and our knowledge keepers. Uh, we're always in consultation with them to guide us in our decision making. Um, so those are the major barriers that we look at um, for some institutions providing services for the people from our communities may be seen as something that needs to be done, but it's interwoven in everything that we do for our students. So we're really, really pleased that we have this, uh, these bursaries to disperse to our students to ensure that they are successful. And that could include additional tutoring. Um, there may be an issue with language uh, in terms of their first language may not be English. So we're looking at, uh, you know, Iska, Anishinaabe, uh, Nehiao. These are our languages of our communities. So we may need to bring in some services to help in understanding the concepts being taught by our instructors. So, so those are some of the barriers that we're looking at overcoming. Thank you. Thank you. So in terms of the numbers, uh, we are looking at starting with 20 students. Each student is going to get 20,000. And that's going to help the students uh, in different ways. Part of that is covering the, uh, the school fees. But the other part is, in addition to what my colleagues have said about the barriers that are associated with uh, child care, transportation, and so on, there's also the barriers associated with technology. Uh, some of the women um, are single women. And there's one uh, technology in the house. What this is going to do is going to help with technology, 
but also with connectivity. One thing we learned during pandemic is really also the challenge that students were facing because they didn't have the bandwidth because people had to share that connectivity. So with this, it's really helping re uh, remove that barrier. The other part I'm going to, to, to add is really uh, providing that confidence that they can go to the employers that they are able actually to, uh, to, to overcome the barriers and they've got the skills that are needed to, to move forward. The last point I'm going to make is, I said we're starting with uh, 20 students. Uh, I said that because we want to use the help we have received really as seed money to make sure that we can continue raising funds from the community that will continue to support these students. So we're starting with 20, but many more will benefit from this. All right, and we'll go to the phones now. Operator, can you put through our first caller? Trisha Kilderman, CBC. Uh, hi there, thank you so much. Uh, I think this question is probably for Minister Schweitzer, but uh, by all means, anyone who wants to chime in. Um, we did see last week a few people, uh, particularly in uh, the video games industry, so I know a very small portion of the STEM world, uh, but they were showing some concerns about uh, potential lack of growth in their industry, and uh, they shared that a number of members of the digital arts group are uh, have decided to stop growing their organizations in Alberta. So I'm just wondering what you could say about uh, future opportunities for these students that may come through these programs and how your government might be nurturing those opportunities. Very good question. And you'll see when we launch uh, publicly our technology and innovation strategy, one of the key elements of it is going to be building in a strategy in Alberta to develop out digital media in the province to make sure that we can capitalize on growth inter opportunities internationally. It, there's a collision happening right now between digital media, the metaverse, you know, how we buy goods online. You got to see kind of growing platforms like Roblox and other things that are really disruptive opportunities to capitalize on growth. So right now in Alberta, it is going to be part of our technology and innovation strategy. We want to work with industry to make sure that we can capitalize on those growth opportunities as well as the investments that we're making in post-secondary institutions. Now, that being said, we have to make sure that we get this policy right. So we're going to be consulting robustly this, this year to make sure that we can get that strategy correct. And the reason why I say that is that right now in the technology and innovation space is effectively 0% unemployment in Alberta. There's thousands of unfilled positions. So the last thing you want to do is put gasoline on a fire uh, and you kind of drive up the cost of labor in the province of Alberta in an area where, there, where there's already an immense amount of demand. So we want to get this right, but also there's a big opportunity here and we want big proponents uh, of the digital media industry long term in Alberta. Did you have a follow up, Tricia? Great, thank you. Sure, yes, uh, kind of in a different topic, but we'll still with this uh, today's announcement. Just wondering if you could speak more, anyone, uh, about the inclusion of child care in, in this and whether that's <clears throat> sorry, strictly approved centers or if that could be used for personal arrangements, that sort of thing. Well, you know what, I'm going to let the people that are on the ground give you a better context on this one. If one of our college representatives would want to speak to that, because I think they, they can really give you some color that would be helpful. Thank you, and I've invited our Vice President of External Relations and Partnerships, who's been integral to the Women in STEM um, movement here at the college to help out with this answer. Thanks, Carolyn, and thanks for the question. Um, we have supported childcare here on campus. As you know, we've got the Thousand Women Childcare Center, so we offer that to all of our students. But on top of that, we recognize that a lot of our students as well have potentially home care opportunities or community members that may be supporting their childcare as well. So the money will be allocated to them as they need it and to the provider of their choice. So it's not going to just be limited to only childcare centers that have been pre-approved. So it's a, less barriers is really important in this area. Thank you. All right, I believe that's all the questions we have for today. Thank you everyone for joining us. And what we'll do perhaps before everybody leaves is we'll just take a photo at the front here. Thank you everyone, have a great day.